We go check in. We go uh, we do this thing right, man. We finally got this thing right, man. This Atlanta rap history, man. We go talk about it tonight. Who started it? Who was the first Atlanta rapper? There he go. Now they go my co-host right there. Now we talking about What's this that? Atlanta rap history. What we talking about? This Atlanta rap history, right? That's right. We talking about who started it. Now they got a lot of people who talking about, you know, they talk about the TIs, they talking about the Jesus, but we know, and you know, that it go way back before that. Oh, some man. People, some, oh. Some, some people talk about the, the outcasts, but but we mm -hmm. know it go way before that. Oh, right? It, it, it go before that. So, so what we yeah, want to talk about tonight is, right, who was the first? Now we got we got three people to talk about. We're gonna even throw four in there. But we got three uh, people to talk about, right? We're gonna talk okay. about it's three people. Was it Shadi? Was okay. it Kilo? I'm gonna throw my boy Sammy Sam in there for, for honorable mentions. Or All right. was it Mojo? And well, you said people three. probably don't even know about Mojo. But but we go we go talk about it. But let's go back to the beginning. Let's tell them who you is and how you know about what we've been to talk about. Let's go back to the beginning before the rappers when it was the DJs. Let's talk about that part of Atlanta history. Tell them who you is first, and then let's talk about before the rappers when it was the DJs. All right, all right. Well, I I am Atlanta first of all, but I go by Legend Mall better known as the party sport. And, uh, you know, so we kind of go like way back with uh, yeah, the history of this thing, you know, especially yeah. around these parts, you know. So tell me about the J team. See, if anybody know about the lesson, we talking about the letter of history. We're not talking about what's, what's playing on the radio today, but we talking about the history. Tell me about the J team. How did you find out about the J team and how did you as a young man, become part of the J team. Okay. Well, I guess um, it first all started out this uh, inspiration for us, uh, what I had in the earlier days of rap, uh, what we could so-called, you know what I mean? We could call, we could say that it's New York rap, you know, kind of like mm -hmm. founding of it. So just kind of really getting uh, that exposure to those uh, artists up there and what they were doing. Uh, you know, was like I said, very inspiring to me. So I just always want to do my own thing, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I mean is uh, put together stuff and uh, stir it up, see what we come up with. You know, so just being that. Uh, uh, long story short, I kind of connected uh, in my last year of school. You know, uh, it was somebody that had the kind of same drive about wanting to produce music, create music, and uh, that was that that would be DJ Kizzy Rock. DJ so, Kizzy Rock. See, uh, see, like we saying, we talking about before the rappers, now the DJ, when it was the DJ. Go ahead. All right, that's when I say DJ. So I was inspired to be a DJ until I met him. He saw what DJ was really all about. So I asked to decide to grab the mic at that point, let him do his thing, and I do mine, you did. But yeah, so, you know, it really came from that. And, uh, you know, we was putting our own, you know, stuff together, place of base posse in the basement of his home, you know, over in, you know, East Atlanta, you know, area, Decatur. Mm -hmm. But, you know. So so when y'all was making them J-Tapes at the beginning, what mm -hmm. songs was y'all putting on the J-Tapes? What was hot in Atlanta? What songs was y'all actually putting on the J-Tapes? Well, I do have to give credit that J T was a formulation before even my time. I was a fan myself, mm -hmm. which would made it so much a big, a big honor to even, you know, even be on the team, you know, at the point when I joined it. So I kind of came up listening to those uh, DJs that we had here in Atlanta in the streets like none other, you know, uh, you know, and it go, like I said, way back even before team, it was a guy named Edward J. Mm -hmm. um, Talk about it, talk about it. You know, he's out of Florida, everything, but he came here and uh, it's plenty of material, you know, kind of out on him. 
So if you ask me, that's the king of the sound. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. So so again, what I'm trying to get to is like what music was y'all putting on the tape? Like I know, like um, you know, when by you being a DJ, y'all taking the hottest songs off of this album and this album and that album, y'all putting them all on one tape, you know, because y'all know what Atlanta wanna hear because y'all y'all are what Atlanta listening to. They they, they, they they rap wasn't on the radio, so they listening to the J team, they listening to Edward J tape. So y'all influencing what the people listening to. So what was y'all putting on the tapes that the people was loving, that, that was making them come up, let me get that tape, let me get that tape. Right. Well, my reason for saying that is because, you know, it was even before, uh, I would say, the era of our music, you know, when it started out. But like I said, once, once it got to us, I think the influence of music would have been a little bit of, a little bit of everything, you know, because uh, a lot of times when kids and I would do uh, mixtapes, it would be uh, kind of set up where side A may be the crunk side, which we saw what we call crunk to this day, mm -hmm. which was, you know, before it was called, before it, was it had called, a name. It was called Booty Shape. It was okay. called Booty Shape. Up tempo. It would be that, yeah, for the reason that, uh, you, know, you know, Atlanta's, the, you know, party scene, party spot all we has been. It's nothing new, you know, to that. Mm -hmm. I see my boy Thuggio out there. Now, Thuggio, <laughs> shout out to my boy Thuggio. Thuggio don't know Atlanta rap history. He been around. He can tell you. He go back. He go all the way back to the um, the dancing crew days before the rap. You know what I'm saying? Before uh, people in Atlanta wanted to be rappers, they wanted to be dancers. Am, am I right? Well, I don't know. Like I say, I think it all came hand to hand. Tell you the truth about it, because like what I mean, as far as you know, the dance part of it. You know, we had to have our own creativity of music, and like I said, a lot of music from other places that was influenced that we, you know that was being danced to uh mm -hmm. that i had to get credit for, you know what I mean? it i probably say some of the older new york kind of music like your africa ben Bada stuff and you know mm -hmm. kind of all this kind of but we would combine it and this with them and stuff like that so it wasn't really all just dedicated to one type of uh, of music you know yeah yeah, yeah. And we had different dj's different dj's with, with different styles mm -hmm. you know like DJ JC, who was on, um, you know, Ludacris today, and you know, went on to do a lot of great things, be on radio station stuff. But you know, he was um, more of a, um, a, I would say, a hip hop DJ. Uh -huh. But you know, he had, but he you know, resonated with our music, so he learned how to kind of, you know, do between the two. It makes him a great DJ to me as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I like we said, Atlanta had, um, they were, they was like. I was talking earlier about uh, the first broadcast. We was talking about that the Yeek movement and how Atlanta had this dance craze that that was called the Yeek that kind of just swept across the whole country. Um, I think people didn't find out about it till really years later when um, Sierra kind of popularized it with the one-two step with the song she had. But it was going on way, way, way before that. It was um, a dance that was going on in Atlanta that was way before she put it out there that was um big in Atlanta. But but like we say, let's go back to the um, original question. Who was the first Atlanta rapper? Who was the first person that you heard from Atlanta rap as a, at being in high school? Well, probably before high school, you know, and I would say that uh, probably uh, Mojo would be the first like radio rapper that was known for us, you know, to, to have his, you know, stuff played on the radio out of Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. I think um, a lot of people can would agree that that's kind of like maybe uh, considered for one of the first rappers in Atlanta. That's what it's all about. Like yeah. So I was doing a little research. I was trying to look up some things and find some things, right? And I was, uh, what did I come across? I came across this right here, and they said that, uh, I don't know if we can see that. Can y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. Now nah, I can't be heard. Well, anyway, that was uh, that was MC Shadi, and he was on the podcast, and he was asked the question, "Are you the first rapper from the South?" And he says, "No, I'm not the first rapper from the South." He says, "I'm the first rapper from Atlanta." 
this is this is his words. I, I wanted to play the audio, but I guess the uh, the video won't play while both of us on. But he says that he is the first one, right? Then I got another video. So I, if the first one didn't play, I guess that one wouldn't play again. But I got Kilo Ali, and he's on a show called The Fact Checkers. Y'all go check out The Fact Checkers. They got a real good podcast. They re, they interview some real good people. Y'all want to check them out. But um, Kilo said that he was the first. Then I'm looking up, and I'm looking up, and I find my boy Sam and Sam, a close friend of mine. I love you. Uh, free Sam and Sam. We waiting on you to get home. Um. When he was saying, he was saying at the beginning, it was Shy, he said it was uh, Kilo, Shadi, and me. So he was trying to say, and he was quoting, he said this was 84. Okay. But I did some more digging and I found that guy Mojo. Let Mojo handle it. And I uh -huh. found out that Mojo came out in 82. 82. So so if we can say who was the first, we will have the problem to say Mojo. Any, anybody in the, in the comments want to disagree with that? Anybody got something else to say? Anybody think anything different? What you say? Well, what I say, and I beg to differ about, is if you ask me, I say that really the, the first rapper in Atlanta to me would be Edward J. Edward J. him still. Because mm -hmm. he would rhyme on mixtapes, what kind of inspired a lot of the rap stuff that's kind of going on even to this day. Because mm -hmm. I can recall even myself having a mixtape that he did where he mentioned with back in the days of 83, it was Edward J. and Wanda T. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> Rhyme, on the rhyme. So they would do rhymes, you know, over um, different instrumentals, you know, and you know, that's why I say you have to do a lot of research on the king as well. Cause I can go on and on and on for days. Right. So cause that's what I was saying earlier before when it was the DJ came before the rappers, when it was mostly about the DJs and then the DJs kind of evolved to some of them evolved to rappers, the kids that rocks. The, the the LA Snows, the the um the um DJ Lens, the the people that kind of transferred, like you said, but they kept the DJ name. Same DJ Quick over there on the West Coast, they keep the DJ name, but they know that the foundation came from the DJ in first. Uh, do you think that the DJs had records before the rappers had records? Um I think the DJs um, probably was more of producing the records. You know, more than anything, I can probably most definitely can say that, you know. Um, and I think it might have been a point where, you know, people kind of stayed in their lanes back then, wasn't trying to really multitask a lot of the stuff. So they would have somebody kind of doing the beats and, you know, the artist do his part and so on and so on. Yeah, so, so, so I was just asking because you know in Florida we used to have a lot of songs that came out. It wasn't necessarily rap songs; they were dance songs. You know, we had um, Tony T. He had a song uh, with the breaking glass in it. It wasn't necessarily no rap song; it more like a, just a planet rock type um, song. You know that 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 DJs was putting out um, before actual rappers was actually putting out these putting out records. So I know a lot of sometimes a lot of DJs, Jam Pony Express and stuff like that, they were putting out records um, just of them mixing live and stuff like that, getting it printed up on the actual record and stuff like that there. So that's why I was asking, did the DJs make records before the actual rappers did? And again, I can say this too. As far as um, I guess maybe considered uh, in uh, Louisiana, what, what Baby is, how he discovered the Hot Boys, and, you know, put out a lot of acts, you know, artists that was from, from you know, from the area. I would have to again say that, um, that about, you know, Edward J and what he did for, uh, you know, even here, uh, here in Atlanta, as far as, you know, how he inspired a lot of people, which a lot of the DJs and MCs were known to become, uh, you know, um, 
hit record makers, you know, her right. say, and what I mean by that, you know, uh, actually, or uh, uh, locally, you know, they were hits to us, and it was hits to a lot of other people. So you had people like uh, uh, your DJ, and, uh, Professor Laser Rock, who went on to be success in the Fed. Mm-hmm. Laser Rock, DJ Laser Rock. Again, like we said, the DJs making the records first, right? Yeah, the Kale Ponchos, the Kids of Rocks, mm-hmm. y'all, Mr. Co- Sound players, Mr. College Paul. Yeah, Mr. College yeah, Paul. Yeah, tell them, tell them again the about Mr. College. Tell, let's talk about it. Tell them about who Mr. College Paul originally is and where he originally came from. Uh, where he originally from, uh, where I originally know him from is Atlanta, and I have to say it. At the time when I met him, man, it was like he was a kid DJing on milk crates, man, you know. And uh, yeah, I know he just went to do this mogul, you know what I mean, in the game, you know, being responsible for other artists. Mm-hmm. And like I said, back from, you know, Elton J, you know, kind of foundation and other yeah. artists who become. You know, went on, um, um, like I say, having major deals, and you know, therefore, but well, yeah, man, hey, yeah, yeah. So, you. so, like we say, a lot of this stuff actually come from the J team. You know, because we get the kids that rock from the J teams. You get your DJ Smurf that later on become College Park from the J team. You get your um your DJ Tunes. Was not DJ Toon down with the J team at one time? Yeah, Shadi, Shadi was down with it. With Speaking of him Shadi, being the first. See, you know, let's see. So, first so that's again right why Shadi might be trying to say that he was the first because wasn't he rapping on the Ed with J tapes before he actually made a record, or or did he have a record first? Uh, that I know of, I would say uh, that what I heard of him, and like I say, this was. Uh, Early stages for me, man. I remember being at the boys' club, having me take take it, taking it to uh, to the boy club with me, listening to it and walking. But uh, yeah, uh, I remember him doing some stuff with Edward J before I heard any records. That's, I would say. That's, that's, that's what I thought too. I think he was he was on the cover. Edward J takes rapping off of like instrumentals of other songs. Uh, maybe the DJ was looping a song or something. He was rapping over before he actually. Made him a made him a record. Oh, before, the, uh, him. before the pink the Panther, before, the, before the pink Panther sample song. Uh, what I heard, yeah, I would say before then for me, yeah, say that. yeah, yeah. So, so that's why Shadi want to claim that. But, but what year was that? Was that before eighty two? Um. I would say uh, I can't pinpoint the exact date on it, but I would say they're somewhere in the early eighties, most early. definitely. Early. So, so, so. Kino, I mean, so, so, yeah. so. Shadi can really got he he can, he he's up there. Him and Mojo, they trying to figure out who is the original, the original one. And one person I I, I would um. Love the one they get on the show and ask uh, would be DJ Man, which was uh, Shadi's DJ, mm-hmm. and he's from the J. He's from the J team. Uh, you know, uh, he actually pro- produced uh, my first recordings. You know that I ever did. You know? mm-hmm. And uh, the first DJs uh, that was a part of what you call the J team. Mm-hmm. You know. Kind of doing this thing, like I say, some stuff he done with Wonder T, but yeah, with Jay, and I, I can't forget his sister, Lady DJ. You know, Lady DJ. The people in the crowd, yeah. the people in the audience, say let Mojo handle it, man. They still they say let Mojo, Mojo is original. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the comments, but the comments say let Mojo yeah. handle it. Let Mojo handle it. See that? That's hey, what I the said original. Going for Mojo, man. They go for Mojo. They go for Mojo. Yeah, the people say let Mojo handle it. Somebody just said Lady DJ. Let's talk about it. Lady DJ, hey, uh, you, know, you should know. Let's talk about it. Who, who, who? He know Lady uh, DJ. Let's talk about it. Yeah, right. 
And you know what? Even even before uh, Mojo Day, before mm-hmm. Mojo Day, look, there it go right there. They tell you right there. King Ed with J T. Yeah, I think he was responsible. Man, put it like this: he was the radio station. It was for the streets. Yeah. Because yeah. I think so B One Two Three was a was a was an R and B station. They really play rap till Friday, Friday night, which was uh, called the Fresh Pool. The Fresh Pool. But before yeah, yeah. you know. You, if you want to hear all through the day, if you want to hear whenever you want to hear, you know, it will go pretty much be a lot of time from L with J Tate. If you were down here, you know, it's time here in Atlanta. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. And like, like I said, I'm a person who used to go purchase my, my L with J Tate. I used to go to the one over off Boulevard. And then I used to go to the one in Candle Market, in Candle Road Flea Market, you know, to try to holler at Lady DJ and get my thing like i was telling you before um when i was in the rap game my, my biggest thing that i wanted to do was be on the lady dj mixtape i figured if i could be on the lady dj mixtape i was i was the biggest thing ever so so we know right. the impact right that lady dj had we know the impact right it's a giving right. thanks to king edward yeah we're giving thanks to king edward j the starter of all yeah. this right because i know the impact that she had and she was came up under the J team. We know the impact that um Tupac. We know it. We see the Grammys and all the stuff that Tupac and that came up under Edward J. We 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 see the um what what DJ Smurf did when he turned to College Park. We see what and that came from Edward J. So we see what you did with your career. That came from Edward J. So a lot of the whole Atlanta sound or what Atlanta was listening to was based on what Edward J was playing. Uh, what you, do you agree? Well, I would say for uh, yeah, in the hood, more definitely, you know, in the streets, more definitely. It was the soundtrack went into the streets for the era, what was going on, you know, the clubs, you know, the girls, you know, like the dance, get loose, pop it, shake it, you know what I mean? Get down all like that, right? you did. So, so, you know, we were the soundtrack for that, you did. So we kind of got into doing uh, stuff for the trunk, for the truck, for the, you know, that's when everybody, you know, riding, you know, you know, clean, you know, got that, whether it's eights and bolts or, you know, hammers or whatever they, Lorenzo, whatever they ride, you know what I mean? Got, yeah. you know, sounds for that. So, yeah, it was the start of, um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, of, of the Atlanta vibe, you know. Because it was what it was what was going on in the streets. Am I, and I, I know I was there in Atlanta doing the doing what they call the booty shake phase, um, if that's what they want to call it. But it was the vibe of the city. It's what they was doing on the street. I had beat in my car when I come down the street beating some Raheem the Dream. We wear short shorts, everybody dancing, they they booty popping, they they doing what they do on the streets. It wasn't even in the club. You just drive down the street and they dancing and so 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 the, the J team was really the soundtrack to a to Atlanta at that time. Right, right. And I can say it was the soundtrack for free. It probably one of the biggest black events it was in Atlanta. Let's talk about <laughs> it. Let's talk about <laughs> it. Was, yeah, so you know, just say, you know, it just blew us a whole great lot of things you know really how uh you know things put together here you know what i'm saying i think right. put together. yeah but like i said i, I, I don't want to limit the city to um get like i said just booty shaped music you know we had all kind of man the music been so diverse amongst the, the neighborhoods and the it's just i i see the reason why atlanta is what it is for us music and what's going on in the music game to this day yeah yeah it's been very versatile all over the city people doing different things different sounds we see you know we had we had one sound at, at the beginning and then um the sound changed and, and the sound changed and keep changing to this day we we invented the sound we got the trap sound that's atlanta invented that we got the um we was talking about a couple of days ago the snap music atlanta invented that sound so the crunk music, Atlanta invented these things. So so we right. uh, Atlanta in, invent the things that the whole world end up doing. But it really all I still have to always say it go back to the DJ because they playing you know the vibe of the streets. They when you go to the club, 
They playing the vibes of the street. Atlanta is the one place that I went to where you could go to um, a script club and they playing a gangster song and then they playing some eight ball and MJG or something like that up in there. It's not necessarily playing a booty shake song and it's in the shake club, you see what I'm saying? But the DJ is playing what's hot. They say what's hot. Right, right. Yeah, well, you know, uh, even even in that sitting right there, man, for the strip club, you know, they you know they don't want to work too hard. They don't want to work all night. Have the pop shop, you know, shake it, like it all night. So they want to slow it down. So we got music that play, man. You know, like like you say in the strip clubs that you know that you know they like to dance to as well as you know the tempo music. And I think it's kind of taking over. I don't, I don't want to say because they get late. Nah, they ain't get late. But anyway, <laughs> hey. yeah. We just, Let's talk about this. And, and only people from Atlanta go know this when I say it. Only people, if you ain't from Atlanta, I'm sorry, you ain't gonna understand what I'm talking about. But anybody who really from Atlanta, let's talk about that pillow base. Oh, wow. Let's talk about that pillow base. Let's talk about it. Oh, man. Um, pillow base, uh, well, you know, still to the day is a commodity. And uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, influenced a lot of music that we all uh, do listen to today, like you mentioned, Sierra, you know. And it just, well, you know, we would take uh, your up-tempo beats, you know, and kind of, you know, double time the uh, slow song and match them up like that and, you know, create this sound, uh, what we call pillow baby. Hey, man, y'all what invented that thing. And and, and, um, for, and and for the younger people who might not know what pillow base is, um, Timberland, <laughs> listen to Timberland music. That's he kind of stole it. You know what I'm saying? You got the heavy bass over the slow song. Timberland kind of stole that style. I, that every time I hear a Timberland song, it made me think about pillow bass. How y'all used to add the air weight to the slow songs. And, and, and uh, talk about that, how y'all knew that people had the big speakers in the trunk. Y'all knew this, and y'all know people wanted their trunk to bang, and y'all would okay. get a, what was it, an 808, and y'all would actually add bass to a slow song. Let's talk about it. Right, right, right. Well, it was a combination of, uh, you know, drum machine making up all drum machine beats, along with um, some instrumentals, some very, you know, some good popular and not so popular uh, instrumentals that we will mix with like, you know, slow songs. And uh, like I say, pretty much, you know, mix it in the time where um, you got the slow music, you know, playing behind or underneath the drum beats, mm -hmm. you know. And not all the time it was in double time, but some of it would just be on uh, what we'll program beats off. Uh, then we had the 808, the 908. Somebody in the comment just said 808 bass. Somebody yeah, in the, the comment just said that. Yeah, the 1200, uh, the 12 and the 1200 drum machine. Uh, you know, they were before, you know, the Roger Lens, you know, uh, you know, so yeah. So we were, um, you know, program beats, so you could use instrumentals to, um, you know, mix songs with. And, yeah. you know, we. Mm -hmm. And that was invented. Y'all invented that style. That wasn't before y'all ain't hear nobody else do that. But but it was the what was it the insight to know that people like to hear their trunk bang? What was right. that the thought process behind it? Well, um that and just being that um, you know, that it was all about the bass, just period, whether it was at the club, <laughs> you know, everything that we did, we did parties, you know, we set up and do parties. But a lot of, you know, trucks. The Trump most definitely was uh, a big, if a big, if not the biggest influence. But be able if you got a system in your house and you're mm -hmm. in the bed with your guy, you know what I'm mm -hmm. and you want to be at some, at some bed, you know, at some bump, you know, at the same time, you know. So you yeah. know, we all they like it, we love it. You did, you know. Yeah. So, you know yeah. Exactly, and that was that was one of my favorite tapes, the pillow based tapes, because I had the. The the uh Ford Explorer back then with with the with the two twelves in the plexiglass case they used to face each other and you just had that boom boom sound when you coming through so I used to really enjoy them pillow based tapes uh back in the days man that was, like I said.
this real Atlanta rap history we talking about. We talking about the history. We, we talking about way back. You know, right. uh, like only few go really, really go remember. And I have to say this too. Not only uh, do I have to give, uh, you know, uh, big us to Pillow Base, but we also created, created a whole nother series called Bedroom Boom. And you know, it's a lot of uh, songs where this uh, on Yin Yang Twin album is called Bedroom Boom. Which um, you know, not sure if Murr produced, but he was from the J Team, so that kind of came from that. Your shorties swaying my way the other time, you know, the slow song kind of underneath the uh, your up tempo, you know, uh, beats, you know, was kind of you know influenced that. And exactly. and just just to even say, yeah, Jermaine Dupri actually, uh, if you check out the bass compilation mm -hmm. that he uh, put out. You know, it featured Edward J. He kind of, they kind of put it on the Edward J. Mix tape style, the whole album that I know of. I think it was kind of platinum, you know, gold, gold record, something like that. But, platinum. Um, yeah, the bass all Yeah, the bass all stars. So, so, yeah, but the bass all stars, uh, volume one, they had volume two, too. But volume one was definitely the one where Edward J. was on there. And um, it had um, somebody else that you know uh, that was on there. And um, let's talk about it. L.A. Snow. Well, uh, we also we also played Pancho that that had the song. Uh, well, uh, I think it was on. Uh, uh, what's up? What's up? The what's, what's up, up? What's up? Yeah. That we did number of uh, the J team. You know, the one on the side. The uh, one on the side was so so deaf. Um, Jermaine Dupri did. Um, you know, done a, done. A, Done a lot of things, man. It's still doing things, man, in, in the business, man. And so again, yep. it always, it always, every time we talk about a person, it always comes some kind of way back to the J team. I tell you, that's the tree star, man. That's the tree. It just grew, you know, yeah. And you know, anybody that bed the different, they welcome to come on and, you know, the minute the, uh, the, uh, you know, <laughs> about, you know, what I'm saying. You did. <laughs> okay. Well, if we gonna say, and we gonna say that then, Let's let's start some real controversy then. And we're gonna yes, say yes. Edward J was the start of it, and Edward J, now we talked about this before. Technically, technically he was on, he was in Atlanta. Technically, he was right there on that street. That that he was right there on Fayetteville, which is the line. If you're on one side of Fayetteville, you in the you in the cater, you're on the other side of Fayetteville, you're in Atlanta, East Atlanta zone six. On one side of the street is Decatur, DeKalb County. That's on right. the other side of the street is Atlanta Zone 6. That's true indeed. And that's the side of the street you say that the first J place was at. That was the first J. Right. Fairville Road, East right. Atlanta. East Atlanta. Atlanta. East yeah. East Atlanta. But where was Kids and Rock from? Uh, being from uh, Gresham area. Uh, same same uh, area uh at Kona's Gucci turn and and uh you know a lot of other genudis and you know kind of you know so I will have to say uh uh Atlanta but you ask him here probably tell you Decatur. Decatur. <laughs> I mean I don't heard him say on records Decatur. I'm not sure if he moved to Decatur or or, or at a at a um later time but um I think his side of the street was just uh what was the cater on the his side of the street, you know? Yeah, but yeah, it's all the same kind of area, you know. So uh yeah, so I would have to say uh, yeah, that area Preston Road, uh yeah, area. The same kind almost around if you ain't if you're not from Atlanta, around the same oh, area the that the um that the J where J first J team first shot was at, right? Uh, I wouldn't say too far. Not too far. Yeah, not too far. Not too far. Yeah, not too far. So, so we 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 see that even though Atlanta gets the credit, but a lot of the swag or a lot of the the um um Atlanta um the music and all these things kind of came from the cable. Uh, um. Uh, most definitely. Uh, most definitely inspired. Um, like I say, it's hard to kind of, I would say, pinpoint the start of which because music never, it, it, it never stopped or started here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like evolution, baby. It's like, it's like, cause it go, we go back to the bands and we can go back to all the, lo you know, your local, 
local bands that made it big. Uh, just you, if you ask me, it's just you know Georgia period from your James Brown. You know what I'm saying? Being with Augusta, Georgia mm -hmm. to you know, yeah, Funk, Brick, and uh, all kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, Little Richard, you know what I mean? Yeah, you saw music. It did kind of hard. The pinpoint, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, and, and being and, and being a person that lived in Atlanta for for man long, I know about thirty something years. Uh, I know how Atlanta people live. So somebody could have been on the west side doing something, and somebody could be on the east side doing the same thing and not know that each other is know. actually doing the same thing. Because uh, I know yeah. for a fact people that that grow up and born in Atlanta. They don't necessarily go to Decatur, and people that's born in, in Decatur don't necessarily go to Atlanta. So it's possible that people could have been doing stuff on the west side, and people could have been doing something on the east side at the same time, not knowing, not knowing. Uh, possible, it's very much so possible. Very but, much uh, because we do know that Mojo is from the west side of Washington High School, right? Drum used to be a drum major at Washington High. Okay. Okay. So, so, so we know that's the, we know that's the west side. He he's up for being one of the first. Oh, somebody say exactly. Somebody say exactly. All right. So then we had on uh, Raheem the Dream. He come from from the west side. Um, what high school did Raheem the Dream? Anybody in the audience might know. Uh, but I'm pretty sure with the west side, I think it's Farrell. I might be right. Farrell High School. Um. So that's well, the let west me say side. That. That's the West Side. Did Shadi that. go to school here, or he was already out of school when he got here? Well, then I know Shadi is originally from New York. Right. At what point here? Uh, I couldn't exactly pinpoint that, you know, the year, but I just around the time I heard, you know, MC uh, Shadi, and he even spoke then on the mixtape that he was from New York. That's how I kind of knew on the stuff that I heard. But it was like a live performance kind of tape. And it was, you know, he was a different way to listen to him. And he he, he was at a someplace or whatever, man. But that's when I was like, okay, I'm just following him ever since. But uh, well, the, DJ uh, Sparrow. Okay. Okay, yeah. Farrah. Farrah High. So, so Raheem, that's West Side High. We don't know if Shadi went to school in Atlanta. We don't know if he was, um he came here after high school or not. But we do know when he did come to Atlanta, uh, he, he he landed on the east side. Am I right? Um, uh, well, that, that that I can't say either. But like I said, I know he done stuff with Elwood J. Um, you don't remember like where I he said, was standing? Like, if he was standing on, on in Atlanta, or was he standing? Hey, yeah, well, I know about, I've never I've never shot him standing on uh, Spanish Trace. Spanish trades. I remember Shadi standing in Spanish trades. Yeah, over, over that way and um, yeah, yeah. Road. Any, anybody who might know Atlanta Candle Road over there off of Candle Road. Yeah, but this is what I do know. I know the first rapper from that from from East Side. The first person they ever screamed, screamed Glenwood. Say Glenwood on the record was Professor Lazy Rock. Professor and he told me, me straight out of his mouth. And when I thought about it, I said, you know what? You are. But you got now your 21 Savage, Holly Glenwood. You got, you know, G, you got all these rappers, you know, they Holly Glenwood, you know. Mm -hmm. On the east side, like how they do uh, you know, on the bank, bankhead on the west side. Exactly. And anybody who really know, you know, if you're from Decatur, you know what I'm saying? I used to live in Decatur. I used to live on Glenwood. 3410 Glenwood. I ain't stay off of Glenwood. I stayed on Glen. It's a lot of people claim oh, Glenwood. It's That's a lot of people claim Glenwood. My address was 3410 Glenwood. I stayed on Glenwood. I used to stand on my porch and look at Pebble Brook. And where I stood, stood on my porch, I looked down at Pebble Brook, right across the street from Pebble Brook. So anybody from really from, really, really from Decatur, they'll know when I say Pebble Brook. If you knew, uh, you ain't gonna know. Yeah, exactly. You're a young, if you're yeah. a young person, you don't know what I mean when I say a pebble group. But and I if they do know, know hey, they don't know. They don't know what it was like. You know what I'm saying? Nah, they don't know <laughs> what it was like. It was a different time, and that's what I want to do this show to try to remind the people about Atlanta, what was going on at the time, 
let them know that we had rappers before 21 Savage, that we had rappers, you know, we had rappers before, before, before um, because a lot of people, um, Future is the OG in the game. Some people, oh, yeah. Future is the OG, like, he, oh, man, Future, yeah, that's the OG, he the GOAT, he been doing, but it's been people doing it way before that. Way before that. Now, we know Future way. do go back. We know he do go back. He go back to the Dungeon family. He was in a group called The Connect back in the day. They were signing the Interscope. He do go back. But we talking yeah. about way, we talking about the 80s, baby. That's right. Where the that's 80s right. babies at? In the 80 babies out there in the crowd, man, check in if you one of them 80 babies from Grady or Grady 80 baby. Any Grady 80 babies out there, y'all check in if you're a Grady 80 baby. But we talking about the 80s, man, because we talking about if you ain't come out at least 84 or or we talking about around 84, 83, 84 time. These the rebels that we talking about. And these rebels happen to be, again, who we were saying. We were saying it's Shadi. We were saying it was um, 94. Mojo. It was Shadi. It was Kilo. And it was Mojo. Yeah, yeah, y'all. Sammy yeah. Sam, yeah, Sammy Sam. Sammy Sam, Sammy Sam say he was there in 94. He said, I mean, yeah, he, had he said he, he had was there in 94. Raheem, Raheem, Raheem on the screen. Go back. Yeah. I said Raheem, and, and we're going to get Raheem on the show. We're going to get Raheem on the show. We're going to get Raheem. Okay, we're going to get a lot of folks on the show. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of folks on the show, so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned because we talking about the history. We're going way back with this thing, so. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. We're gonna get a lot of, it's gonna be a lot of people that was there at the very beginning that could talk about not only the music, cause we don't wanna just talk about the amount of rap music, but what was going on at the time that influenced the music. All right. Again, talk about the Buddha Shake era, but uh, let the people understand why it was a Buddha Shake era. Tell them how many script clubs it was back then. Oh, uh Probably just as many as it is now. That's one thing, you know, that didn't even close down, you know, like like a good liquor store, you know, in the neighborhood or something, you know. But uh yeah, it's just uh always been a thing and I know it's too just kind of traveling that uh this one of the few places that uh, the women can actually get uh, you know, all the way, you know, but nagging it. It's the home mm -hmm. of the booty shit the money makers, you know. We talking about Atlanta, so you know. Right. Uh, Back in the days, you had uh, strip clubs just, uh, you know, spread out all the city and then, you know, start branching out to the other areas. And, uh, yeah, it's just a thing here, man. So that's why it's somebody big for him. Somebody mentioned yeah. in the comments the skating ring. Yeah, somebody the skating ring. Had... The skating ring. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah we had jelly beans uh, back then. Uh, uh, you know, we had uh, Golden Glide, Cascade. Golden Glide. You know, yeah. And uh, I guess that was one of the things uh, to kind of do, you know, do here at the time, especially get out and, you know, mix and mingle. And then you had to, had your crews who would dance, who uh, skate, and they would have four uh, groups. So I think they have a lot to do with it, too, with, uh, you know, how we had dance groups here. You know, uh, go to crowd pleasers, to FDC, to the uh, untouchable, uh -huh. so many dance groups that formulated, but a lot of it uh, was choreography, man, on skates and stuff too, at the skate rink right now, that they had put together, which was um, amazing. So we always just been a place, man, about, you know, having fun. Uh, you know, um, yeah, it's just a different kind of place, man, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody else, somebody mentioned in there them teen clubs. Uh, them teen clubs. Yeah. They used to have a couple of teen clubs around. I'm thinking the one I remember was my brother's keeper all the way at the end of Camerton Road. I remember that uh, one. I remember, oh, Sharon Showcase at one time. I think she might have lost her liquor license or something. She was doing teens only. Uh, well, somebody she was supposed to have a teen club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody say Club XS. You know about that? Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, say Club XS. You know about that? Yeah. Yeah, I know about Club XS for sure. You know, I got my first start there, you know, really emceeing on the mic in the club. Okay, well, let's uh, talk about it. it. Let's talk about it. Then how you going to skip over that part? Let's talk about it. Club XS. Let's talk about it. Okay. It's so funny to talk about when it comes to the history of this stuff with me, man. So, you know, it kind of like, 
you know, that was just one big part of it back then. Club Assess was, uh, you know, what can I say? It was a, uh, it was a place, man, where uh, young adults, man, was able to get together in like large quantities of people because this club was massive, man. Mm -hmm. So that's why like some of your artists, like Outkast, kind of opened up there and did stuff, man. You know, I remember them opening up for um, uh, DJ Cook concert. Mm -hmm. You know, before you know they even um, had a record, mm -hmm. you know, out. And. Um, but yeah, Club Assist, man, we used to get a lot of artists, man, that we would listen to down here that was even outside of the, the state, you know, from other states that we would listen to, you know, like like your uh, DJ Quicks, and mm -hmm. uh, might have to get over that one, one weekend, and, and mm -hmm. you know, it turned out, they had the most going with the radio, but Club Assist was kind of like the, uh, the it spot, man, for the young adults, man, back then, man. Huh? Okay. I mean, yeah. I would say, yeah, somebody in the in the in the comments had uh posted that up, man. It said I remember Master P came there. Master P came there. Yeah, everybody that was big outside the city, you know, you know it was hard, you know I, it wasn't so easy back then to get them people to you know come to places, smaller venues, you know. So like I said, they had a big enough man where they can have all these big time artists to come in town, you know what I'm saying, to do shows and stuff like that. Though. And if I am mistaken, yeah. um, if I am mistaken, it ain't there now. So, so if if you young, you probably wouldn't know. But if I am mistaken, that was on Moreland. Somebody said that yeah. was on Moreland yeah. in the Plaza. It's um over there way where they it was the driver's license place after that, and then they um they oh, changed it yeah. to Club Coco Loco, and then they yeah. changed it to uh cop, somebody in the in the in the uh chat says uh Coco Taco Coco Loco. Oh, Coco, Coco Loco, Loco, yeah. Yeah, so, oh, cool. so, yeah, so anybody know that area over there off of Moreland, uh, well, everybody, that's they, where Club Assess used to be back in the days, if anybody remember. Uh, yeah, where well, the, well, the game room used to be at. Right, 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 right the game room used to be at. Um, rest in peace to my, my man Mario, man. Uh, man, we miss you. We miss you, dog. My man Mario uh, got murdered that's up there at the game. So I'm not like that. Night, 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 night. Let's talk about it. Now we talking and that's about okay. the old night life. We ain't talking about and the that's night that. life on Custer. We talking about and the old night life. Let's talk about it. Okay, where did I see you? Probably can speak more on that. You know I me mean? on the old night. I know it from Custer, where we had a shop, an Edward J shop, right up the street on Custer. Mm -hmm. You know, yep, yep. You know, sure it was Edward J yeah. right up the street on yeah. by the car wash up that way by the car wash. Right, right. Exactly. right. They right. tore that right. car wash yeah. down. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah quite yeah. A, he's quite a few shops around the town, you know what I mean? And you know, it wasn't popping that, but them on 1350, you know what I'm saying? Mixed taste, you know? Yeah. But 90 minutes to rock, 60 minutes to get you $10, $10 for 60 minutes. But you know, that's another story. But go ahead and talk tell about it, man. Tell them, folks, I just can't go. Tell them it folks, all go back, it all go, it all go back to that, though. I'm just it saying, it just all back to that. And, and, yeah. and, and again, let's, let's, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Right, I'm glad you brought that up. Mention them prices again. Say them prices again. $13.50 for a 90 minute tape. And how much a tape cost? Uh, what was y'all buying tapes for back then? Well, that I could say because it would be in box shipped in by the boxes. By the big boxes, but but y'all paying box. about less than a dollar a tape, could you say? Mm, that's hard to say. I wouldn't know that at that time because they might have been a little more expensive, maybe cheaper. You know, mm -hmm. you know, at the bulk, at the bulk rate that they was being purchased, uh, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, uh, you know, kind of small amount of money per tape, you know. Exactly. Just like anything you buy, the more you, the more, the more you spend, the more you get, you know. Right, that. exactly. So what I'm trying to say is y'all was making some money. Y'all would actually, be not, not necessarily like how some, how the rap game is today. Y'all actually making money. Y'all actually make a tape that day and get paid that day. Right, y'all make a tape, it go for sale that day, and 15 y'all paid that exact day. 
And there's some days where it's a line out the door waiting on to get finished hey, being let's made. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm going to talk about that. Look, this is what I'm saying about it. I mentioned we had several stores at one time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that all in itself uh, just says a whole lot on that because um, it wasn't even um, anybody else's um, records, tapes, or not being sold, just, you know, stuff that we would, we would produce, you know. Straight at with Jay. Straight at with Jay tape. Y'all selling them for $13. Buying this boat, y'all selling for $13. And and um, buying them in bulk. And this ain't the thing. Like, you keep the reason why, the why the reason why I'm saying it like this, the reason why I'm saying it like this, because I want to see mm -hmm. the all the entrepreneurs that think you got to buy other stuff and break it down. Right? This is the whole reason why I'm talking about it. Because some people think you got to buy other things and break it down. But right. y'all were buying big bombs of tape. The real dope game. Breaking them tapes down the time. The real dope game. Y'all wasn't even selling down. Y'all was selling $13. 13 and 50 cents. We'll give you 60 minutes for $10. 60 minutes. Y'all breaking them things for down the time. Yeah, they can, yeah, breaking them down. Yeah. So, and just to say that... Did, you making money legally. Yeah, everybody making money. And, yeah, and, and it's talk, big talk, and the picture big. Talk about, it, talk about how you how talk about it. You say y'all used to be able to just you go grab your own, you got your own tapes and you just going out making your own money. Talk about it. Well, you know, like I said, the shop was the only place where you need to be at with it. Anyway, cause that's where everybody would come together. Mm-hmm. So that was the success of uh, being able to set a set of tapes for thirteen and fifty. Mm. That's, that's the success of that. Yeah. So it kept everybody, you know, good at what they were doing. But like I say, it's a greater, bigger picture than that because so many artists have went on to become, or or the team have went on to be, whether it was music execs, just so much more. So to yeah. me, it was bigger than it was bigger than thirteen fifty. You know, per tape. But y'all was it making was, history. Y'all was making history, not knowing it at the time, but y'all was actually actually making history. Every time y'all was making the tape, y'all was actually making a part of Atlanta history. It was making history. Exactly. Making That's history. why we were talking. Yeah, 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 making history with every tape. Y'all was making history with every tape. So so we we um we 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 go agree that um Mojo probably was the first rapper that came out, but we go give it really to Edward J, man, and, and 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 the J team for really being the first ones that really bringing this Atlanta music to the forefront. I think it's it's J team, it's Edward J, and the J team that is the reason that it is. Maybe if it wasn't for you know y'all, everybody would have just still been listening to you know the New York stuff and the Miami stuff and the and the, and the other people stuff. But it was to, to actually see your own people from, like you said, the kids in rock, somebody I go to school with, uh, you know, and to actually be around these people that was actually really, really making the sound. And I'm, I'm speaking from a fan point of view because I was a fan of the JT. I was a fan of them JTs. I spent my money. I used to spend my 13 on them JT. I was a fan. I was a fan of Kids of Rock. You know, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. And then I get to end up meeting these people later on in life. I, I get to meet and be friends with these same people that I used to be a fan of. Same with Kilo and, 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 and some of these other artists we're going to talk about later on. But um, the J team. Like I said, I, I was a fan. I, I used to drive, you know, go over there, get my tape, you know, go over here, get my tape. Like I said, when I first started doing music, I thought being on the Lady DJ tape was the biggest thing in the world. Like, forget getting a record deal. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that. I'm trying to find Lady DJ, and how can I get on one of her mixtapes? Because that's the power that the J team had, man. So let's, let's talk about it. Well, you know, I don't know. I feel the same way like you, man, because uh, I grew up listening to them. They was the radio, like I said, to the streets and everything. So just being that, uh, I want to know a lot about a lot of artists or music 
uh, probably wouldn't have even reached because it was before internet and all this stuff like that. You know about a lot of what kind of inspired me. You know, as a uh, artist, bad producer, you know everything I've done. You know what I mean? Uh, kind of with it, but um, definitely have to say um, it, it was bigger than um, and we even knew what we were doing at the time. Put it like that. Yeah, y'all didn't even realize how big it was at the time. That's what I hear a lot of people say. The influence, mostly the influence. You know, because like I say. You know, one floor, if we, it's generations of influence, you know, but it's all through, you know, the generation that had a chance to share, you know what I'm saying, that moment in time of uh, of having those, you know, tapes, and, you know, of being able to get more influence of music from even if it's from other places to formulate who we are and who the artists are. So right. I say, right, so that's where the, I feel like the versatility and uh, diverse movement of different kind of music kind of uh, comes from, because I tell you, you can't tell me that it's not too many records that wasn't influenced by what was going on uh, in the streets and in the clubs. Mm -hmm. well, you know, you kind of start out early going to clubs because it's always been team clubs. Mm -hmm. So the what music that the DJs would play and stuff like that kind of sparked and started off with, um, I think a lot of artists wanted to, um, you know, inspire people. The ones heard in these clubs with these girls moving and shaking and people doing this and that, and, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of and from that. And yeah, and like you said, and and it was the, it was for the it was for the streets. Somebody put on the um in the comments said the J Team tapes were for the streets. They said them 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 tapes were for the streets. And and, and if I remember that you know they were they were for the ones they had the bass in the car. You know you wanted that thing to be knocking. You know you want to get your old with J Tape because you know that thing gonna have you your car knocking. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just my thing was I used to like that had old. Like I said, the old Ford Explorer with the beat in it, and I want to come through bumping me some old Raheem Dream or something, you know, old Pillar Bass or something like that, come through there and with the beat because I want to see the people dance. And, and, you know, like you said, they was dancing in the streets back in the days, man. It was, it was a different time in Atlanta. You know, Atlanta a little more, you know, on the gangster side right now, but it was a time when we parted in Atlanta, man. It was a time when people got together at the park from all sides of Atlanta on a Sunday and be in the park just be packed, man, and everybody was just having fun. And, um, you know, the freak neat we you talked about earlier. Let, let's talk back about that, about that freak neat and how um, the freak neat really brought uh, the world, to open up the world to a lamp. Yeah, well, well, I have to say this, uh, oh, Jeffy, when it comes to, uh, you know, Atlanta is so many different uh, variations. Uh, say Piedmont so, Paul. <laughs> say, say it used to go down at Piedmont Paul. Yeah, that, that was part of it. But you know, even when it came to Freak, it was everywhere on every side of town. It was just down from downtown to the east side, to the west side, to the, you know, but that was one of the ride spots where, you know what I mean, Piedmont was. And you had Maddox Park and Mosley Park that was on the west side of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, it's just been another um, thing where, like I said, you know, people was able to get out and, you know, let loose and have fun because, you know, it always has been struggling, like, just like in the way here. Else, so, you know, that was just our way of um, celebrating in the way from, you know, whatever, because, you know, we had stuff going on here, you know, even back then it kind of helped birth the whole movement of, want to get out and kind of free and you know what I'm saying yourself that was like Atlanta child murders you know what I mean just from that you know people couldn't come out the house kids weren't coming out like that mm -hmm. so that's when first burst of being able to get out the house and kick it and party and have fun to go to the parks you know being groups you know kind of kick it like that but they you know they always been spots you know for them hood the way though you know just kind of coming up on the west side myself mm-hmm to people like on the outskirts of Atlanta, like 